Hello and welcome to Ion. I'm Chuck Moss, your host. Welcome to the show. We have one of my favorite people here. Um, where do we start introducing you? I think it's Ruth Johnson, but it's like former county commissioner, former state rep, former Oakland County clerk, former secretary of state and current state senator. Uh, we're good to, glad you're glad to have you on the show. It's maybe the first time and if it isn't, welcome back. Well, it's great to be here, Chuck. And more importantly, um, I grew up in a 600 square foot cinder black house. I know what it's like to be from a hardworking family that barely makes it. And I know taxes hurt people. And so I understand when we raise taxes, not just uh, intellectually, I understand how it impacts families. So uh, that's why I'm here today, because I wanna talk about a tax that the county commission is trying to uh, put on the whole county, a new one. And I wanna thank you for your vote the other day. Yeah, my uh, pleasure. Well, you know, you came up to your old stomping grounds, the Open County Commissioner's Auditorium. I, you know, um, I see you there in various, various roles and to deliver a no holds barred talk. And what would that be about? Well, really what's trying to be done here is to tax our homes, our businesses, our manufacturers, our stores, our restaurants that aren't going to get any service from that tax. That's just yeah. wrong. May I, may I uh, throw something in here? I think what we're talking about here is uh, there's a lot of various words for it, but I think it's the Oakland Transit Expansion Tax. It expands Oakland County, uh, that's what I'm calling it, uh, it's Transit Expansion Tax. It expands taxation to all the communities in the county and uh, 9, 0.95 mils, 10 years, no exceptions, take it away. Exactly. And um, most people really don't get any benefit from it. Only 0.04% of our population takes that bus to go to work. We've seen an incredible drop in ridership, 57%. It's really an outmoded form of transportation. And it's the most regressive tax you could ever do on your property tax on your homes and businesses. And in 1978, we voted to raise our percentage that we pay in taxes on goods from 4% to 6%. But we took out food and we lowered our property taxes. That's the two things that you need. And medicine, pharmaceuticals are not taxed either. So we were able to reduce our taxes to be able to keep people in their homes. As a past Oakland County Clerk Register, I saw people lose their homes due to back taxes. So we need to be sure that that just doesn't happen. Well, right now, the uh, what? Okay, let me let me throw you know, kind of set this up a minute. What we have right now for transit is what's called the 196 Authority from Public Act 196, where anybody, any community, it's community by community by community, like Birmingham, Bluefield Township, Pontiac, can choose to join uh, and uh, be part of an authority called the Oakland County Public Transit Authority, and uh, there get the benefits and be taxed. They can also choose to leave. And so, you know, it's a coalition of the willing. It's communities that voluntarily want to be part of it. And that's, that's how it's been. This new expansion tax is to replace that framework with an all-in count, total county. People who live up in the farmlands that I think you represent can be subsidized, believe it or not, you're subsidizing Birmingham. I live in Birmingham, but tell me how that's moral to make poorer people subsidize Birmingham and Bluefield. It's wrong. So that's what we're talking about this fall is an expansion of the uh, expansion of the smart tax to everywhere. And uh, it's just, uh, you know, uh, it's to be, uh, there's a lot of things wrong. First year, they're going to collect over $66 million. Where's it going to go? Work times 10 years, that's a half a billion dollars. And they don't even have a plan to show us. They have a concept, no plan. That's a half a billion dollars in property taxes of which the greater part of Oakland County gets no benefit from. We do have 29,000 acres left of farmland in this county. And in my area, we all go in together and get point to point rides. We have less population than um, four times what they have per square mile in Grayling. We have farms, we have open space, we have large acreage parcels. So um, the village of Holly, half the people are Alice Poverty. That's asset limited, income constrained and employed, the working poor, where I came from. 
every dollar counts. They can't buy good food. They can't buy all their pharmaceuticals often. They go without or every other day. And that's what we're going to tax. They're already paying for their own and they're donating 90%, well, it's worse donation, but 90% of their municipal credits. We keep 10% and send the other 90. We are paying our fair share. This is just wrong. Such a regressive tax on property. We know that we did um, Proposition A back in 78 to lower our taxes because we have to have a place to live. We took it off food, we took it off pharmaceuticals and for a really, really good reason. We need to continue to protect people so they're not losing their homes on taxes. And this is just part of the problem, not a solution. Now, Ru uh, Senator, you were talking about, uh, you know, we're talking about the framework of transit as we have now. You were involved in setting up the current framework in the beginning, weren't you? Absolutely. I worked on the issue many years ago, and we had a compromise that communities could choose for themselves if they wanted to participate. And that's what happened. It was fair, it was honest, and those that wanted to participate in the line haul system could do just that. Obviously, where I live, it's like way up north, we have a lot of farms left in open space. It really uh, wouldn't serve us well to have line haul. Matter of fact, after I left that meeting at the county, um, there was a giant line haul bus with one person on it um, that night. And I, you can take a look. There's very few people that are riding on those buses. It's an outmoded form of transportation. It's hugely expensive too. We have to get up with modern times. We need a real plan and we need uh, the county to set up so that everybody, if they're gonna be taxed, and I don't believe property taxes are the right way to go. As I said, we're already contributing, all of us, to that bus system. Half their budget comes from state and federal taxes. So we are paying our fair share. The question is, are they willing to live within their budget. And I guess the answer is no when you're talking about an increase of a half a billion dollars. And then there's the trickle down, the doctor's office you go to, the grocery store, the manufacturers, they'll all get hit with this tax too. And then they'll charge us for it. So there's even more than what we see on the surface. It's bad for business, it's bad for people. Now, you were talking about the line hall buses and how, how where you are, uh, uh, I can pick up line buses. I, I live in Birmingham. Birmingham is always supported transit. Birmingham is at ground zero. It's at Woodward Avenue and 15 Mile Mabel. I can walk in 12 minutes and pick up a bus and be downtown. That is not true for you. That's not true for a lot of people. And the buses make a lot of sense for us. But you know, there have been a fall off of riders ever since COVID because a lot of folks don't want to cram onto buses, period. Right. Yeah, a 57% drop. It was actually dropping before COVID. And then when COVID hit, it, it did just take a nosedive. And there's other modes out there of transportation. Even Uber and Lyft would be far cheaper. Um, for any community that wants the line haul, I heavily support them. They should be able to if they would like to. And we all contribute to our federal and state taxes. But to add on a property tax, when we all agree that's the worst tax, the most regressive tax, uh, I find it really offensive when you look at the village of Holly and they have half of them are in Alice poverty. They're working, but they can't make it. They just can't make it. And when you add on even what they consider is a small amount of money, it's huge for them. And I think it's rather arrogant to think it's not much. And I also think it's wrong to say too bad if they don't get any services. My little township, it's the least populated in the county. We pay $6,000 a year and we have all the transportation for anybody that's a senior or those disabled or veterans. It's taken care of. How much are we gonna pay? Hundreds of thousands of dollars. And they're not gonna even <laughs> provide our bus service. It's not a good deal. It's a regressive, it hurts people, especially people that are, are on the line, whether they're middle class or, or Alice poverty or poverty. Um, the average bill right now, people have sitting on their charge card is $5,611 in, in the state. They're behind. We just went through COVID. Why would you, earth would you put a property tax on people's homes? Well, we're also in the, we're also in a recession which is defined as two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth, whether the president chooses to admit it or not, uh, you know, two plus two make four, whether you like it or not. Um, also, a lot of the communities that uh, you, know, you represent in the northern part of the county don't go to downtown Detroit, they go up to Flint. Uh, you know, they're, they're in a different orbit entirely. And you got the Rochesters that are their own planet, which is why they don't, uh, 
don't get involved in a lot of that. Uh, I'm just uh, wondering, you know, what, uh, what another here, this is another, I got problems with it too. So let's be honest. And I've got a background in transit, as you know, is that the current framework is based on communities. And the people who get elected, uh, the, the citizens don't like it, they can replace the people they elect. And it's kind of, uh, you know, it is a patchwork, sure. But what we're replacing it with is 50% uh, of the population plus one, the tyranny of the majority, which if you, you know, it's, it's what the Constitution was written to avoid, you know, we're calling James Madison. So the deal is, is that you can have a lot of people in the South just vote themselves money from somebody else for their own service. And it's a 10 year millage. You can't get out. You can't get out. One man went vote one time. That's right. And you're right. We're not even in the Oakland County telephone book for decades. We're in the Flint telephone book. Most of our riders go up near Genesis, Ascension Genesis. That's our hospital. It's just barely over the border in Genesee County. So most of the seniors that take that bus go up there to see the doctors that have offices all around that. Uh, ironically, this will not allow them to go outside Oakland County where the hospital is five or 10 or 15 minutes away. That's where my doctors are at, where I live in Groveland and the Holly portion. And you're exactly right. I liken it to 10 people are on the street. One person has worked hard and weekends and taken a second job and built their dream pool. And so there's 10 houses there. They all vote. That person votes no. The person that's their best friend votes no. But the other eight say, we get to use your pool every Saturday night. And they vote. Now we're talking about transit, you know, uh... I've uh, been involved in the County Transit Authority and I've been involved in the RTA. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, the whole point was to keep, uh, keep, keep the enthusiasm of transit advocates from running away with the reality. Uh, you know, there's a lot of places that have density, density of trips. We're going to talk about New York or Chicago or San Francisco. And we don't have that. Uh, we're far more diverse, we're more spread out. And yet, they're talking big about transit with a capital T, but they don't have any plan that's detailed to show us. Exactly. They have a concept that's very patchwork, extraordinarily patchwork for our county, but not for the fee, not for the property tax. That's everyone. It is one of the most absurd things I've seen. And I've been serving, uh, volunteered for 10 years, and I've been serving for 32 years. I've never seen a more unfair way to do this and a more regressive way to do it. I, I, I've worked with some of those people that voted for it, and I just don't understand why they would do that. You should not have to pay if you're not uh, at least getting something out of it on your property taxes. The way, reason why this was put in was in your um, city, if you wanted to add more money for your fire department, you could do that. This was never meant so that you could tax people on their homes and farms and, and offices and businesses. No, it's, it's it to someone else. Yeah, we're going to take a break here. We're talking with State Senator Ruth Johnson, and we're talking about the transit expansion tax, which will be on the ballot in November. I'm Chuck Moss, don't go away. We'll be right back here on Ion Oakland. Welcome back to Iano. I'm Chuck Moss, your host, and we're talking with State Senator Ruth Johnson, and we're talking about the Oakland Transit Expansion Tax coming to the ballot on November. Is it a good deal? Is it a bad deal? Well, according to the State Senator, it is a bad deal, and it's not just a bad deal for the North, it's a bad deal all around. So here's my question is, uh, I'm sure that the uh, propaganda blitz is coming. I mean, I remember the last time we had, you know, the nice blind lady, which, by the way, was a lie. The blind lady in all the commercials could get a uh, could get a ride from Smart, but they lied. Uh, it's going to be uh, seniors, 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 or save the nice blind lady. And the blitz is coming from the nonprofits and the, the big money. So how do you think that's going to play out? Well, um, I think that there's a resolution that will allow it to be voted in. It was really too bad. It was one of the worst gaming of the systems, using those that are disabled and those that are seniors and veterans. 
as pawns because the leadership at the county did not put it back on the ballot, what's supposed to come up every four years to create a crisis so that they could do those ads. But thankfully, um, people are working on a resolution that will allow them to continue to get their rights. So I appreciate that very much. Yes. Well, what you're talking about is that uh, we call it the smart village, but actually it's for Oakland County, it's for the, the transit authority. Transit authority, who else are they gonna hire but smart? And it gets re-upped every four years uh, on the ballot. Well, when the county board of commissioners put the transit expansion tax on, they did not put anything to renew the current millage, which means that it's all or nothing. And then they just, it's like they cut the safety lines, jumped off the roof of the baby in their, in their hands and said, Hey, catch me or the kid dies. You know, I mean, I, I got a problem with that. So let's see if we can uh, maybe get a, get a dual track, uh, but that's going to be another thing. Oh, you've got to do it or the nice blind lady dies, you know, things like that. These are real deceptive ads. Uh, I got a question. You got your ear to the ground, not only in the North End. I think that the proponents of this tax, expansion tax, I think they might not. I, I, I think they might be a little over optimistic as to whether this is going to pass right now. We're in a recession. Price at the pump still up. Price at the gas station still up. You know they say, "Hey, it's just pennies a day to help the I help the poor." People say, "Look, I need pennies a day to feed my own family." What do you think? Yeah, I think that they're going to pour money on it like we've never seen because it's a half a billion dollars that it comes to. When there's big money like that, there'll be big money going into it. They don't care if the buses are empty or it's outmoded or anything else. There's special interests involved. And yes, I've seen that too, where they put these commercials on because we all have good hearts. We don't want anyone to be hurt. And I know that's why there's a, an effort to have a dual track so that they don't lose their ride. I don't want anyone to lose their ride. I just want to go back to the way it was until there's a full discussion, everyone's involved, and that we make sure that there's no losers in this. And right now, most of us are losers. Only 2,500 people use that bus to get to work. Is it really worth taxing people on their homes and their businesses and manufacturers? That's a good question to ask. How come so many buses are empty? How can we accommodate people? This isn't about should we have mass transit or not. This is how we do it most effectively and how we tax people fairly. And that's just not done here. It is a just ramming it through and counting on people's heart on these commercials that you talked about. Oh, you'll see plenty of them. So I appreciate you, Chuck. You're getting out the facts. We can't have a good America or a good state or county unless we have the facts. So thank you for doing that on your well, show. All thank the time. you. Thank you. Here's a deal. Um, Last, okay, this is now, this, this expansion tax that we're voting on will be the same framework that they have in McCall. Last time that the smart vote, you know, the transit millage was on in McCall, it only passed by 44 votes. That's 44, not 4,400, not 44,000, 44. Uh, and, uh, you know, who knows? I know Mark Hackle has said, I'm not putting any more of this stuff on if I don't have to. Uh, I don't know that, I don't know that all, and they got all the propaganda too in Macomb. I'm just, I'm just looking at this thinking, this is a heck of a gamble. And what if, it, and, and I think it may fall short. I really do. I don't know that everybody who's going to come in is going to say, well, I'm going to vote on abortion. So also vote for transit. I'm going to vote on, you know, I'm going to vote for transit. I'm going to vote for this. I'm going to vote for transit. I don't see it. I, I mean, I, I, I just don't see it. Do you? Shame, you on, shame on the leadership at Oakland County. They have put people's lives at risk of not getting a ride to the doctor. They didn't have a backup. They didn't have a dual track. They're just counting on people voting for a property tax. When gas prices are high, the economy is very shaky. As you said, the definition is we're going into a, a recession. I was, yes, I was the Oakland County clerk registered deeds during the last big one. And we had more foreclosures in Oakland County than at only second to the Great Depression. We know that we increased our sales tax by two cents, so we keep not do that, keep our taxes down on our homes, buildings, and properties, and businesses. This is an outrage, really. They are using these people as pawns. They should be ashamed of themselves, and then trying to tax people on their homes that are barely making it, working and barely making it. I've never seen anything quite like it. 
I hope I never see anything, anything again. I hope uh, that we can get that dual track since the leadership did not do that and are using no. muscle. Well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see about the dual track. Uh, it's it's uh, getting a little late to stick something on the ballot. But here's the thing. Now, uh, the uh, money alone, I mean, they're talking about more money for you know, the, the paratransit, more money for WOTA, which is Western Oakland, and NOTA, which is Northern Oakland, and, and then various senior places. But really, there's nothing in the language that guarantees that any money goes to those things. So you have uh, 66 uh, million dollars, 66.1. And it's going to come in and be entirely at the discretion of the board of commissioners. Boy, you know, holy Tammany Hall, I hope you made the right campaign contributions uh, to get your transit. Uh, and I hope you're, you know, that it becomes a complete political uh, football. That's something else that isn't uh, talked. It's, they're probably not going to see it on the nice ads that they'll be running. Oh, no. And by the way, they're only they're only told, no guarantee, that they're going to get a quarterback for every dollar they charge in property tax. Not a good deal. You know, why would you do that? Why would you say, yes, I'll take a quarter back on a dollar? And then there's places like mine, Holly, Groveland, Rose, and Brandon. We all go together up here because we have farms and we're just point to point. That does what we need up here. We're paying for that out of our own pockets, out of our own taxes. You know, it, what they want to do is charge my town, my township hundreds of thousands of dollars for something that we pay six thousand dollars a year but then we have the privilege of still paying that six thousand dollars a year it is the most uh, i mean it just doesn't follow even the basic rules of america i wow. i'm, so just, I'm yeah. just disappointed i can tell yeah um, here's an interesting <laughs> thing is that what it does is that uh, one of its uh, this the expansion tax actually one of the talking points is that the current millage for smart we'll call it smart right current one we have is 1.0 mills i think it's knocked down because of headley to 97 or something yeah so 97 or 98 whatever so the deal is is that the argument that's being made to the current opt-ins like birmingham Bloomfield township is that you're going to get a tax decrease okay i like tax decreases but what the oakland township rose township Brandon Township, some of the poorest areas of the county are going to subsidize Birmingham and Bloomfield. That's morally wrong. I mean, I, you know, how, how is how do the poorest communities subsidize the richest communities? How is that even right? And make sure that people know it takes away your local control. Your board in Birmingham knows what what's best. They're held accountable. There's transparency. It's all great. But really, at the board, we do have that problem that we are um, a minority. We're the majority in, in um, uh, geographic area, but the minority in population. And Holly is the poorest. The village of Holly has half Alice poverty and lots of people just barely making it that might be a notch up from that. I live in a, a, in a township that has 38% Alice poverty and growth. Um, we're we're just getting by most people are just getting by so for the 2500 people that want to take a bus to work we're supposed to spend over a half a billion dollars you have to look at return on investment but of course they won't give us a real plan just the concept and that's fishy too that's a red flag people should have demanded a, a plan not some concept that they don't have to follow no, it, it's, it's, the concept, it's the concept. I mean, one thing I've noticed over the many years is transit ad activists are very, very, they, they love the concept. But when you start saying, okay, how do we get person A to go from, you know, uh, point X to point Z? They're, oh, you know, oh, you know, okay. There, there is no, there's no plan, you know, it's, there's no how. There's what they want to do, but there's no how to it. And that we just give them more money and the how somehow magically become a reality so uh you're not you're not seeing that uh i'm just curious is it's it's not half a billion dollars by the way it's 66 it's more than half half a billion is five it's six 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 point one so we're not you know, it's even more than half a billion what um i, I just in, i'm just in, intrigued that uh when you brought up the fact that the poorest citizens of the county are subsidizing the richest what they say you know, what, what, what do the proponents say? <laughs> I just oh, don't, I don't think they care. They just don't care. They want money. They want money and power. They've forgotten their way. They've lost their way. It should be about people, not about them having 
power and money, not about having access to this over half a billion, like you said, well over half a billion dollars on the backs of people that can least afford it to get nothing out of it. And they know that going into it on property taxes, we're supposed to get a benefit for it. We will not, many of us, most of us won't even get it. So I, I was so disappointed because I worked with those people before. I've never seen that attitude before. It's pretty much, we just don't care. And no, uh, horrible. We won, you lost, right? <laughs> Um, that's so, where it's at. Yep. Yeah, well, you know, that's, that's a tough one. Well, you know, what's interesting is that this isn't the only millage being kicked around at the county. You're talking about a countywide senior millage. They're also talking about getting rid of the road commission. Uh, that puts it's going to put a lot of bucks into the uh, county commission to dole out. Uh, on what basis? Who knows? Uh, so so not, it's, not showing that it's going to be fair. And yes, once you're in a region, all of us, because we can hold our local officials accountable, we can keep our property taxes down. We can go without that new shiny fire truck if we have to. And our local officials will help us with that. But not, not this group. This no. group is just hungry for money and power. And it's not about the little guy, not about the ordinary guy. It's about power and money. And it's, uh, it's, it's pervasive lately. And I've no. never seen in 32 years uh, the direction that we're going in, and never been more troubled over it. Well, any, um, you know, any, any, uh, I got any predictions as to the vote? I mean, you know, look, I voted no at the county, so I guess you're, you know, you vote, you don't like it, so I guess that makes two of us. Uh, <laughs> any predictions of whether the vote would go yes or no at the county level? Well, I think if people find out the real facts rather than the phony ads, the ones that do jerk your heart, I think if we do get a, a resolution that does have a second track so that we can make sure that people will have continue to have buses, and I'm confident that there will be a resolution to do that. If people know, I really feel like it will go down. If they don't know, I feel like it will pass because people do have a good heart in Oakland County. They don't want to hurt people. And that's going to be the ad. If you don't do this. And I heard one of the leaders on TV the other day who set up this crisis to happen, by the way, as a manipulation. Oh, if this doesn't pass. There's no rides for seniors. That's it. Yeah. Look, yeah. Um, you know, vote yes or the nice blind lady gets it. Yeah, I've seen those kind of commercials. Well, uh, Senator uh, Senator Johnson, State Senator Ruth Johnson, and former everything else, uh, you certainly have the uh, certainly have the uh, the resume to know you know a good deal from a bad deal. Uh, this is the Oakland County Transit Expansion Tax. It will be on the ballot, and uh, make up your own mind. Uh, I mean, you know where where you are, and know where I am. All right. Well, we'll leave it at that. I want to thank you for joining us, uh, State Senator, uh, and I thank all the rest of you for joining us here on Ion. Thank you, Chuck.